Hi guys, this is gsnlone.com and I'm here with the LG G5, the current flagship from LG. It's the first modular phone that we test and is the LG flagship on the year 2016. It was announced at Mobile World Congress 2016. It's been selling from April and you can find it on Amazon at around $600 or $700. On eBay it got as low as $496 recently. So let's talk about the design first. We're dealing with a metal case here and people have been talking about the fact it feels like plastic. Well, it's in fact metal above which LG applied a special solution that makes the paint adhere to it better. That special solution includes metal particles, so in the end it's all metal. It's a comfy phone with a good grip and great one hand usage as you can well see here, although the power button at the back feels rather flimsy and noisy which I'm sure you can hear. Aside from that, well, we're dealing with a handset that's clearly slimmer than the predecessor, 7.7 mm in thickness, the LG G4 was 9.8 mm. It weighs 159 grams, which is uh, uh, 7 grams more than the Galaxy S7 and 4 grams more than the LG G4, but you cannot tell, which is a good thing. We have a solid frame and a solid build. Also, there's a gently curved back, and this is a more compact phone than the LG G4, that's for sure, and also comfier. Now it's a modular phone, so we have to power it off. And let me show you how you can remove the module at the bottom. Okay, it's off now. And that light is still blinking, so... Okay, we got a button right here, a very small one and inconspicuous. You press it, and then you can pretty easily remove the modular bit. This is it, this is the battery and the lower portion of the phone and you can replace this with a Bang & Olufsen Hi-Fi Plus model with DAC and amplifier or you can add an extra special uh, camera module that adds a little bit of extra battery and some extra camera buttons. Sadly we don't have those accessories and the list is much longer. The LG Friends include an LG 360 degree camera. There's also a VR headset, there's a rolling robot, a drone remote, so a ton of LG Friends items unveiled with this phone. Sadly, we don't have them. At the front of the LG G5, there's 3D art glass, which is gently arced to the sides. There's a curved screen panel, and every once in a while, if you look at it, you'll see that it's also curved to the top and bottom portion, not only to the sides. Okay, we're done with the modularity, we're done with this discussion. One thing I do not like about the design is the way that the frame meets the modular section. They don't fit together well. As you can see here, there is not much continuity in the design line. Anyway, aside from that, the phone looks great, it feels great, and aside from the small caveats, it's a success design-wise. It comes in silver, titan, gold, and pink as color options. Now it's time to talk about the display. We're dealing here with an IPS LCD 5.3 incher with a Quad HD resolution. It's supposed to be a quantum display with a high contrast ratio and always on functionality, which you can probably see already. Anyway, uh, the diagonal is 0.2 inches smaller than the LG G4. There is no video player, so that's why we had to resort to the gallery and check out our usual test video. Okay, so this gallery surprisingly has pretty many options for video playback, screen ratio, subs, settings, so quite a few of them for a regular run-of-the-mill player. Now the actual experience involves a pretty good brightness, wide view angles, and the colors feel a bit cold and the image is slightly bluish or greenish, but the contrast is rather okay. If you look at the phone with a black background in a dark room, you'll notice slight light bleed onto the sides of the screen. And other than that we have RGB stripes pixels as you can see under the microscope and then came a little bit of a disappointment. We measured the brightness of the screen and only achieved 365 lux. It's quite low for a flagship. The LG G4 before it had more 432, the LG G3, well, that was lower, 343, and still we scored below the Sony Xperia Z1, which is certainly not a compliment. Of course, we also have special settings for set screen. We start off with the home screen, which you can select either home, easy home, or one that includes an app drawer. Right now, we don't have one, as you can well see. Let's get back here. So we can tweak the lock screen, wallpaper, shortcuts, a cool weather animation, home touch buttons, they can also be tweaked, button combo, and the color of the background as well. 
font type, font size, bold text, brightness, auto, always on display, which lets you show the time or signature. So that's about it. It also uses up a bit of the battery, as far as I know, less than 1% per hour. Okay, then there's screen timeout, and in the more section we got daydream and motion sensor calibration. And I'm surprised to see you cannot tweak any of the color aspects, contrast, uh, and things like that. Usually, modern phones let you tweak the color saturation, for example. Anyway, we go past that. It's an underwhelming screen, sadly. Time to talk about the performance, and that entails discussing the hardware features. So we're dealing with a phone that relies on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 powerhouse of a CPU, quad-core chip, quite the jump from the LG GeForce Snapdragon 808. We also get 4GB of RAM, LPDDR4, 32GB of storage, microSD card slot, and the phone is fast and pretty snappy, but some of the animations feel like they take a bit too long to load up, and that may be perceived as lag by some people. Of course, the games run okay, Hungry Shark World ran okay, Riptide GP2 also ran well, there's no problem, there's no frame drops, graphics are excellent, and no complaint in the gaming department. Okay, so here we go, good looking water, responsive controls, good frame rate and textures, nice lighting effects, and good shadows. Now since the gaming checks out, it's time to talk about the benchmarks for a bit because, as I said before, we have a powerhouse of a CPU here. I won't insist too much on the results here because we have very many benchmarks and you'll be tempted to get lost in them. In Quadrant, we're placed on the 5th spot all time, we've tested hundreds of phones and this one came 5th so far, so that's a good result. It's only slightly below the Xiaomi Mi 5 and HTC 10 and then in Antutu 6, let's see how we did. As I said before, we have a huge amount of benchmarks, so it's very easy to get lost among them. And here we go, variations of the score. So with this score, we're 4th place, all time, almost the same score as the Galaxy S7, which tells you that the performance is high, and the 3D aspect of Antutu had us score the 3rd place. And uh, in 3D Mark, we registered a very small difference compared to the number one model, so we're also doing fine in that area. While in GFX Bench, we scored once again close to the very top. So this is a top 3 or top 5 phone in all of the benchmarks. There's also no overheating here, in case you were wondering. So that's the thermometer. It showed us 37.7 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of gaming. And then the other temperature test, this one scored... 35.9 degrees Celsius after running the intensive benchmarks GFX bench. So no overheating on the LG G5. If you want to discuss the battery, you saw it before. It's a 2800 mAh unit, easily swappable. It's a decrease of capacity actually. The G4 had a 3000 mAh battery. We are also promised quick charge with uh, up to 80% reach in 30 minutes, but if only if you have a special charger. And that always on feature takes up about 0.8% of your battery per hour. Now let's discuss the results that this battery gave us. And I have to warn you, they're a bit underwhelming. So first things first, when it comes to HD video playback in a loop, 9 hours and 58 minutes, and at least we beat the LG G4 with its 8 hours and 55 minutes, but still we scored below the iPhone 6 and the Xperia Z3, so that's not very impressive. A big letdown is the PC Mark test, only 5 hours and 55 minutes. To say it's unimpressive is an understatement. Is the 46th placed phone among all the phones we tested. The G4 scored 5 hours and 19 minutes, so yes, it's a progress, but this result is below the one of the LG AKA, which is pretty much an entry phone, entry level phone right now. Well, at least the charging is fast. We did not have the original charger, we used the one of the LG V10, which we are also testing and achieved a huge and very impressive score of 1 hour and 18 minutes of charging, which places this phone on the 4th place all time for its fast charging. Obviously, there are settings for the battery, provided we can find them. Here we are, battery and power saving, they aren't very complex, here you have the battery usage. And here you have the battery saver, restrict apps in the background, block of always one display, and 
turn battery saver on at certain percentages and then a special feature for gamers. There is game optimizer with base optimization that adjusts video resolution and full optimization, just video resolution and frame rate to save extra juice. Overall the battery could be much better but at least the charging is quite good. Now when it comes to acoustics, we got a 3 hole speaker here, of course there is the module with Bang & Olufsen but we don't have it, we are promised 24 bit playback and I noticed that the speaker is very easy to cover in landscape mode because it's here and you're going to hold your hand like this. Now the music player feels familiar, I don't feel that much has changed from last year, but let's see the settings. So we got audio effects that includes an equalizer with functions like normal, pure surround, quad beat, bass booster, treble booster, vocal booster or custom with 7 channels to tweak. Then there's the pitch and speed and auto stop, music on wear, syncing with an Android Wear device and now it's time to go to the playback. So let's listen to some tunes. Ok, conclusions, we got a loud sound and clear, there's a slight distortion at the maximum volume, it's best to listen to music at about 70% or 80% of the volume and you'll hear all the nuances of the sound and the bass is quite good. Of course, we tested the quality of said speaker using a decibel meter and got as high as 86.9 decibels, quite impressive, it's the 10th placed phone all time in our test still below the LG G4 and it's 88.1 decibels. It beats the LG G3, Galaxy S6 Edge and Galaxy Note 5 which is quite good. We have an extra special set of settings for sound and notification. These are the sound profiles, volume, ringtone and there's something called ringtone ID that composes ringtones automatically based on phone number which is kind of cool. We got vibration strength, do not disturb, notification LED and more features including sound effects related to various commands. We didn't get headphones with our test unit but I've used the Quad Beat 3 from the LG V10 and I have to tell you the experience was excellent, was loud, clear and crisp, the bass was perfect and so was the isolation. Ok, time to talk about the camera, it's no regular camera, it has a ton of features so it's a dual camera here, dual camera setup with not so big protrusion which is a good thing and the LG G4 before it had a great camera. So we're getting laser autofocus, advanced optical image stabilization, a color spectrum sensor and as I said before two cameras. So one of them is a 16 megapixel shooter with f1.8 aperture and 75 degree lens and the other is an 8 megapixel shooter with a wide angle 135 degree lens. The main camera is taken straight from the LG G4 is the exact same Sony sensor. At the front there's an 8 megapixel shooter for the selfies and now it's time to fire up the camera which by the way it's pretty fast. Here we go and let's analyze the options. So startup is fast, let me go to the auto mode and uh, the zoom feels kind of laggy for a very simple reason. If you reach a certain threshold in the zoom you'll switch between the two cameras. In the lower level of zoom you switch to the 8 megapixel shooter, in the higher level of zoom you, sw you switch to the 16 megapixel shooter. Other than that, well the focus is very very fast changes focus ultra fast. Picture taking also fast, instant as you can see and uh, you can see here that at the top you can change between the two cameras so you can pick the 60 megapixel shooter and you can pick the wide angle 8 megapixel one for a wider viewing of the surroundings and you should be careful not to get your fingers in the way, it happened to me a lot and to other people who use this device. The main modes are simple, auto and manual, with simple you just tap and take a picture, no fuss and no problem, ultra automatic, then auto with a few tweaks and finally manual with a lot of tweaks. So let's go to auto, here we have the flash options, front camera, shortcut and the modes that include auto, slow-mo, time-lapse, pop-out, multi-view, snap and panorama, with pop-out you'll make a section of the image 
pop out and the other one will be caught with the wide angle camera. We can apply effects like fisheye, black and white, vignette, lens blur. You can even apply all of them at the same time and that's what pop out is. Then there's multi view that uses three of the cameras available here or more. So there are three cameras, two at the back, one at the front and they can be all used at the same time or only two of them or you can choose. Then there's snap, basically a collection of videos that you can edit every bit at a time and of course there's panorama, time lapse and so forth. Now let's go back to auto and the settings include HDR, the resolution or better said aspect, you can tweak filming to 4K, Full HD or HD, there are effects labeled film here, voice command and there's a difference between optical stabilization and steady, steady is actually meant for the moments when you're walking around and need that extra bit of stabilization. On the right side we have the sharing and editing buttons, we got Gmail, we got Instagram and Facebook plus the options to tweak the pictures. And once again you can switch between the cameras and keep in mind that the wide angle one has fixed focus as far as we know. Ok, now it's time to go to the manual and show you those options, as you can see there are a ton of them, we got the options to shoot in RAW or JPEG, then we got the other options including this leveler, and let's see what else, you can tweak the white balance, the focus, exposure, ISO and shutter, plus there's this extra option auto exposure lock, and something extra for the flash, you can see it's written R there, it's a special type of flash that allows you to create a motion trail. Ok, enough about the camera, many options, I feel that there are many more compared to the predecessor and here we go into the gallery, be advised, many shots here. So over 200 of them, let's start off with those taken during the daytime. Ok, so one thing to remember is to not get your hand in the frame while shooting with the wide angle camera, as you can see, there's a bit of a finger here, but the shots look fantastic. There's a slight feeling that the wide angle camera catches more realistic colors than the 60 megapixel one, although color was great all around. So the images are very crisp and we started zooming in a lot onto this uh, building in progress of a mall and we didn't lose details which is fantastic. We took the zoom all the way to the max and we were pretty happy with the result. You can see workers on the scaffolding, although that's my actual distance to the mall, very very impressive. We took some selfies and I remember that on the LG G4 I was totally unhappy with the selfies, this time totally happy, I like the skin texture, hair texture, even the background looks nice, so this time LG did not drop the ball, I could even go as far as to say their selfie camera is superior to the one of the Galaxy S7, but only a bit. That's the feature you saw before, the one that splits the screen, and once again excellent scenery and landscape, you will not lose any detail, as you can see me zooming in and not losing them. Perfect lighting, no blur, great exposure and white balance, perfect colors and just have a look at this superb wide angle shot with great details and great colors and clarity. Of course, we also did some very nice macros here, just check out the texture of that uh, string and here we play with the focus, we focused on that thing and then on this thing and had a blast. Excellent colors all around and very good close-ups and by the way this is the panorama with a generous resolution of 21,376 pixels over 4672 and I have to say just like I said for the LG G4, the LG G5 has the best color calibration on the market, it just feels right. And more macros, playing with the pop-out option and a few more colorful items and then we tested the HDR like this, so a regular shot, an HDR shot with an excellent dynamic range. We continue with our analysis of the gallery, once again great macros, we're playing with the wide angle camera, I have to admit I fell in love with it but once again the finger is in the frame every once in a while and of course the images are not as detailed as the shots of the 60 megapixel shooter. Once again HDR in action, a regular shot and HDR shot really really useful this time. We play with those film effects which you'll encounter on many phone nowadays, excellent details and texture of these flowers, basically you cannot drop the ball with this phone, there's no blurred shot or miss shot or things like that. We have a fantastic dynamic range, the colors are the best on the market, the most accurate ones 
and I feel that they're even more accurate than on the Galaxy S7, but the quality and clarity of the shots is the same as the Samsung rival. It's clearly above what the iPhone 6s has to offer right now, but in the end is the equal of the quality and colors of the LG G4, of course with the extra of the white camera. Of course, we analyzed the low light capacities of this cam and let's see what came out. So, uh, when it came to this test, we did notice that the street light halos were a bit big, but the clarity was almost day-like and we have well calibrated colors. Just check out this car, it's night, I have to remind you that it's night and it's low light conditions and still it looks very crisp when being zoomed onto. We have a perfect building texture, no blur, great details, a powerful flash put into action and when it comes to low light capture I go as far as to call this the equal of the Galaxy S7 although that one has superior aperture. And there are two differences here, while the LG G5 takes clearer shots at night, the Galaxy S7 takes brighter shots at night, so they compensate, so they're fighting like equals. Overall, the camera of the LG G5 is top 5 material when it comes to all the smartphones we tested, if not top 3. Now, as far as the video is concerned, this handset shoots in MP4 format in Full HD at 30 frames per second and 17 mega per second bitrate, and it also does 4K video. So let's start with the stabilization test. I have to warn you that uh, if you're going to watch our playlist of videos, you should keep in mind that it was a very windy day and the microphone on this device is not exactly very good. I'd say that stabilization is just okay. I mean, it's good, but I've seen better on other phones. For example, the Galaxy S7 stabilized the image better and we even tried out the front camera just for the sake of curiosity. Here we go. Full HD video shot with the front cam. I'm pretty happy with the colors and clarity. So all of you vloggers out there will be content with this. Now let's see some other clips available here. Okay, so front camera and this one is shot with the wide angle camera and as you can see it's pretty impressive the colors look spectacular the lighting is excellent and once again the microphone cannot handle the wind and then we have a 4k clip which we should be able to find here somewhere here we are this one is totally spectacular 48 mega per second bitrate and uh, um, perfect focus, excellent colors, and the exposure and brightness were simply great. We also tried a slow-mo video, and uh, once again the microphone could be a little bit better. This is the slow-mo. Check out the moving flags. This one is a 720p clip, so we don't have big expectations from it. And finally, this one is taken in the shade, pretty crisp and clear, nice gloss of the toys and good setup of the exposure. I find that this camera is clearly above the one of the LG G4 when it comes to filming. That one was a letdown because it burnt everything and had stabilization problems. If you remember last year the G4 had an wobbly image when filming. Okay, so we also have this last clip which we use to test the zoom. So here we go, zooming in. And when we zoom in for the third time, there was a bit of quality loss, but then we focused properly and the quality was quite good. And I also noticed that the acoustics feel a bit echoey, so it films in an excellent fashion, it's on par with any flagship, too bad for the microphone. Now during the night, we also have videos shot at night, like this one for example. Okay, so it was very short, more experimental, and then we have this one. So we got big street light halos, reasonable quality for nighttime, and there are some bluish and purple areas on the edges, but nothing serious. Now let's see another nighttime video, like this one for example. As you can see we have nice colors, good clarity, but I still cannot shake that bluish hue at the edge of the image. And if you try to zoom in at night, you register a pretty serious quality loss. Also, in some areas, the image was a bit shaky, but still, for nighttime, for low light, it handles it pretty well. I've seen better on some flagships, but only by 10% tops, so it holds its own. 
So it's an excellent camera on par with all the flagships out there, although maybe the microphone is a bit of a drawback, but one thing you can remember for sure is that it's an upgrade from the LG G4 in the video department, while the photo remains exactly the same, which means good or better said excellent, especially color wise. Now the browser, we got Chrome pre-installed and here we go, loading up gsnlone.com. It may not look like a fast browser, but the benchmarks told us otherwise. We had excellent results in Sun Spider and Browser Mark, and we got a comfy virtual keyboard here with a numeric row included. Now when it comes to connectivity, let's see what we're getting here. So this phone has 4G LT, category 12 and 13, has a nano SIM card slot, Wi-Fi 802.11, A, B, G and A, C with MIMO support, Bluetooth 4.2, there's also um, NFC, GPS and GLONASS, DLNA and USB Type-C plus infrared emitter right here at the top. Now the calls, well, we got loud and clear calls, a good microphone surprisingly, and uh, I feel that the signal was kind of lost sometimes, so you should maybe remember that. Here we have the speed dial option and Q slide which minimizes the uh, phone calling feature. We also did some speed tests which we are going to find out more about in the full text review. You can see this is a Wi-Fi test and then we did a test on the carrier Vodafone but once again we're going to detail those in the full text review. Okay, now it's time to talk about the OS UI and applications. We're running on Android Marshmallow here with LG UX 5.0 on top. And as you can see, the default version of this UX doesn't have an app drawer. So all the apps are on the home screen. We have a minimalistic user interface and the icons feel like they're taken out of the game Monument Valley. Let's say that for example. Okay, so if you go to the leftmost home screen, you'll find something called Smart Bulletin, which is an aggregator of several features from the phone. We got LG Health with the pedometer, we got the calendar with today's schedule, we got the music, player and smart settings, as well as the quick remote and Evernote, and you can tweak them all here, select or deselect some of them. Other than that, let's see what else. So if you keep press the home screen, you got the widgets, home screen settings and uninstalled apps. And these are the widgets. Many of them good looking and transparent and home screen settings which have to do with the layout, the theme and the option to implement or not an app drawer. And then we have the uninstalled app section showing you the apps that have been uninstalled in the past 24 hours. In case you regret that decision, you can reinstate them so to say. In the multitasking area, you can find this carousel and you can pin apps like this so even if you close all of them the pinned one will not be closed there is no dual screen mode here because probably the diagonal isn't big enough for that the drop down section includes the aviats toggles for connectivity brightness slider screen sharing file sharing and of course notifications and then there's also capture plus letting you capture a screenshot and then do a bunch of editing things okay uh, now um, as far as the quick settings are concerned, you can see them here and you can also tweak them like this. Now we can go to the actual settings which are divided by tabs or can be shown as a list. So we already covered the display and the sound. These are the networks, call, share and connect, tethering and more. And general it's what's interesting us now. We got cloud, we got users. We can add one more user, we got accessibility and something called shortcut key. You can assign your volume buttons various functionalities like taking a photo very quick. Okay, and then we're off to the fingerprints and security area. There's a fingerprint scanner embedded into the power button. You probably know that already. And you can unlock the screen or see lock content with your fingerprint. Okay, so we go here and uh, we can add our fingerprint. Next. You can secure it with an extra pin. Okay, something basic. And then you have to scan your print, which happens very fast, as you can see. Much faster than on other phones. And voila, it's all done. Done, And now we can unlock the screen and access a bunch of extra content in the gallery and quick memo plus that can be locked from other people. Okay, so here we go. We only have to touch it to unlock the screen and that may seem to work fast, but 
sometimes there is an extra bit of milliseconds longer than I would like this process to last like it happened right now so sometimes it's nice sometimes it's kind of on the long side we go to the settings again to show you the smart settings these are basically profiles that are activated in certain areas on the map so when you're at home if you have this activated well of course you first have to see what home is and place it on the map then you can change stuff related to the sound profile bluetooth and wi-fi a special profile can be activated away from home something that happens when earphones are plugged in or when a bluetooth device is connected so bunch of profiles if i'm not mistaken in the android world motorola experimented with this many years ago maybe four or even five years ago then we have memory and smart cleaning as features available here and you can also play with the Q slide apps and let's check that out for a bit so display home touch buttons okay so uh, here we go home touch buttons button combination you can place Q slide here and once you press it these are the Q slide apps video phone contacts messaging so you can watch a video and phone somebody and keep doing something else while also using those floating windows okay and of course you can remove it once you're done now when it comes to the pre-installed apps we counted all of them there's 48 of them which means we have bloatware and there are 15 coming from google so those here plus some extras we got those ones for management battery saver memory and battery usage for example and then we have the tools shown here with the weather and voice recorder and tasks and fm radio those from lg like music email quick remote and smart world quick remote lets you control the tv set set top box or blu-ray player for example via uh, infrared then we have the social networking apps facebook evernote and instagram then a calendar and finally quick memo plus that lets you draw some options for drawing and uh, you can take notes use bullets underline alignment and all sorts of things reminders included and then we have lg health which monitors your steps and your cycling power walking stair climbing and even traces a map path once you do that then we have the lg friends manager which will manage your accessories modules and all those cool gadgets i mentioned in the beginning so that's it in a nutshell those are all the apps and all the software to talk about on the lg g5 time for the verdict and we start with the pros on the pro side it's a comfy phone a modular phone it has a top five if not top three camera in 2016 uh, it produces excellent colors when taking pictures great low light shots and the wide angle thingy is magnificent the performance is great it's a phone that has a loudspeaker we get an infrared emitter and the interface looks quite nice feels evolved from the predecessor now on the con side well we have to mention that this phone comes with bloatware there's a slight bit of light bleed the brightness is a bit on the low side colors are cold and uh, this area here is not exactly perfectly built the way it meets is not exactly perfect anyway uh, we also don't have very many modules which has got to change if lg wants this phone to be more popular also uh, the microphone didn't feel very nice during filming and the fingerprint scanner is a bit slow we got long system animations some signal loss and the battery felt weak when it comes to continuous usage as you can see quite a few problems here with this flagship don't get me wrong it has its great aspects everything is great aside from battery and screen basically those are the deal breakers other than that everything is simply perfect things you have to remember the camera is excellent the performance is also excellent and if you're going to stay indoors a lot the screen is good enough and the battery well it may be decent for video watching but for gaming not so much and um, for example i barely got through a day with this battery in the end you should remember the camera the modularity and the evolution in pretty much all the aspects from the LG G4. So this is the LG G5, one of the biggest rivals for the Galaxy S7, but not the one to vanquish it. This is it from gsn.com. Bye bye.